Hi everyone, welcome to Lockdown Lessons Part 11 now. And we've done quite a few so far. And with me today, I've got Simon Hebditch of Gather Technology. So first things first, hello to you, Simon. Hi, Phil, how are you doing? Very well, thank you very much, very well. So um, what I'm gonna do is just take you through a few questions, Simon, um, and hopefully the people that are listening will take some ideas and inspiration from that that's gonna help them with their business going forward. So the first question I've got to ask you, I suppose, is, is really what do Gather Technology do and how, how do you help people? Um, well, we are a technology service provider um, with a focus on providing managed IT services to the legal and finance sectors. Um, not all we do, but that, those are the main things. And, and we tend to, um, the people we help the most are people in regulated spaces with, with their IT. Okay, so sort of the, the most professional services then basically, yeah? I would say so, yeah, accountants, lawyers, insurance, um, anybody who, um, who, who needs their IT to run their business um, and also needs the IT to be uh, to regulatory standards. Okay, fantastic. That's that's great news. A lot of the a lot of the tech companies I speak to don't operate in a specific niche, so it's always interesting to hear about somebody that that understands a specific niche really well. So that's great. So just taking our mind back really to to March the twenty third to the the first lockdown we were in. At what yeah. point did you think there was going to be a problem commercially, Simon? Uh, day one of the second lockdown today, eh? Um, <laughs> Brings back memories. Uh, <laughs> I think we've we were quite lucky, um, Philip, in the sense that because a lot of our clients were in spaces where um, there wasn't such an impact um, on their businesses. Uh, initially, we we weren't too concerned about the commercial impact on our um, business. We were more worried, I think, that our clients might struggle, and then there might be a triple down uh, effect. But we kind of felt that that wasn't going to happen straight away. Um, and I I think. Uh, at the moment, we're a long way from, it feels like we're a long way from the end of this um, pandemic. Um, it, it was a scary time for everyone. And, and naturally, we were concerned. But um, uh, I, yeah, I, I feel like we're, we as a business were quite resilient. Um, and we were more worried for our customers and our clients than, than we were for ourselves. Uh, but obviously, we knew that if they did struggle, then that we might struggle too. Yeah, sure, I understand. So, so what did what did you actually do to adapt during during lockdown? Then, well, we sent everybody um, home, obviously straight away um, as we had to. But when we started Gather, which was about three and a half years ago um, now, we made a very conscious decision at that time to exclusively use uh, cloud based technology and systems. Okay. Um, it wasn't that we had tremendous foresight and we could see this um, pandemic coming. <laughs> um, it was more that we wanted flexibility for our staff, for our business and for our customers. Um, so we didn't, uh, we didn't want systems that would tie us to one location um, because we were hoping we'd grow quite quickly. So we would have to move offices because we started in a sort of a, you know, a shoe box with, a, <laughs> with three or four of us. Um, and, now we wanted systems which would allow us to do that basically and also would allow us to work from our customers premises if if required and if that would help them um and we would we had dual locations anyway because we were based in london and in somerset um so we didn't adapt we didn't have to change any technology to adapt um i think the biggest uh, thing the biggest change and the hardest thing for us was the um, decision to furlough people because um, from a technical staff point of view, we were as busy as ever. Um, but our sales um, guy, Mark, who'd only been with us for for six months and was just sort of just had his first big sale and was starting to build some momentum. You know, he really couldn't do his job in the first lockdown because you, you couldn't go anywhere. Um, and I don't think there was any real facilities for selling at that point. So it was a very tough decision, um, but we had to furlough him, which was probably the biggest change we had to make. Fantastic. And I know he's back on board with you now, which is great news. So, yeah. so what wins would you say you, you experienced since the start of the first lockdown back in March? Um, a couple of things, I think. So the first one um, was probably the, the I don't know, um, I can't speak for many businesses, but um, uh, most of the ones I have spoken to, everyone's sort of, um, nobody's uh, taken the mick um, when they've been working from home. Everybody's sort of almost worked harder, I think, um, during the lockdown than, than they did maybe before the lockdown because everyone realized, I think, the need to, to club together. Um, and so from our point of view, one of the big wins was 
everybody working together, clubbing together, and um, you know where you could potentially have some personnel or HR issues. We we were really lucky, and we didn't have any. Um, and it's, I think, one of the biggest um, positives that came out of it was how desperate all of our staff were to get back to the office. Um, and it's kind of reassuring to know that. Um, we can't be that bad a place to work if everybody's <laughs> desperate to get back there. Um, and we almost had people asking us, you know, before we, uh, you know, we were having to say no to, to people coming back to the office. Um, so yeah. that was one team spirit. Um, I think the second thing was, uh, was actually relating to Mark, our sales guy again. So um, Mark came back from Ferd on the 1st of September um, and uh, really, you know, hadn't hadn't done anything. You know, we'd spoken to him a couple of times during the during the lockdown. You know, especially at the end of the first furlough period, and just to you know let him know how we were getting on and what our plans were. Um, and within a month of being back, uh, Mark had won another um, uh, another sale with a customer, which you know for us because our relationships with customers tend to be longer term um, and, and a, on a sort of a contract basis, um, we each wind's massive because it, it's not just you know one sale and then you know you've got nothing again it's it's a, a recurring thing um so there's sort of a compounding effect of him winning business um and it was through a, a virtual networking event um which wow you know I, i'm not a huge networker myself um and that's why we sort of took mark on because he's a natural networker um but i i had my doubts when he was telling me about these virtual networking events that they would be um of any use to really but i mean clearly he, i was wrong because yeah within a month of being back he'd won a a sale with a um for a software development contract for us with a with a customer so um yeah that was brilliant good yeah it's, it's strange actually because i think when we first went into not lockdown a lot of the networking organizations just just shut down straight away there were a couple that started up restarted very quickly um yeah. and um yeah, it's, uh, and then after a while, people felt, well, hang on a minute, how long are we in this for? If we don't go networking, we're not going to meet anybody. So yeah. this seems like the only the only alternative at the moment because waiting just isn't really an option because business and life goes on during lockdown for most people. So so why don't we just just get a crack on and try and meet new people? And and obviously Mark's Mark's done really well with that. So so that's great news for you. So yeah, well, I, I think um sorry to interrupt that. No I, just to set on the virtual networking thing, I, I think um. It's actually been a real positive because usually with these things, you know, you go to the, your local one and maybe one, two that are slightly further afield. But Mark was saying a couple of his groups are national um, networking groups. So he's actually been able to join in with um, events all over the country, you know, and, and meet far more people uh, than he otherwise would have done. So, yeah, no, I, I think that's um, that that's been that's been a real a bonus, I think, for a lot of people, really. So what changes have you made since you went into lockdown, whether it's on the, the operational side or the sales side or the marketing side? Have you put into place that you you're going to keep on doing even once we're back in the uh, the uh, world of normality, shall we say? Um, the virtual networking thing definitely is a, is a massive one. Um, and I don't want to keep harping on about it, but um you know, I, I'm, I'm sure Mark's not the only person who, uh, as a sales guy um, or a business development guy, would spend his, you know, a lot of his time on the road trekking around. Um, and I, I must admit, I've, um, I, I've, I've long been a believer that you have to sort of sit in front of somebody and see the whites of their eyes while you're doing these sorts of deals. Um, but I'm just not sure that's the case anymore. Um, you know, we've, we've closed two deals during lockdown uh, or since the pandemic started um where i've never even met the, per, the the customers in the flesh which you know I, I don't like doing business that way i'd much rather go and see them yeah. um but but actually you know maybe for the future for the environment and everything else traveling around like that is is something we should look to do a little bit less of um yeah so we're definitely going to keep that and um i think the other thing is from our point of view is, as engineers and delivery Again, we've always felt that we needed to be on site and, and doing these things. But um, during lockdown, we delivered a uh, we did a migration project for a customer of ours who has a branch in Australia. And so we were working with their guys in Australia. You know, you couldn't really get more remote than that. <laughs> um, and um, it was a pro it was a project which we probably never would have done remotely if we could help it. And yet, you know, actually it went. To, you know, we were all surprised how well it um, how well it went. And obviously, a lot of planning and prep goes in, but um yeah it's quite daunting but having done it it's actually like wow we we can do it and it's not as hard as we thought 
Yeah, I, I mean, I think from the client's point of view as well, there are there are a few clients out there that prior to us going into lockdown probably felt that they needed to see people face to face and and people like yourselves and other professional services out there, myself included, wouldn't be yeah. able to supply the same level of service if we weren't face to face. And then when yeah. they were forced into a situation where we couldn't be face to face, they sort of thought, well, hang on a minute, this is this is actually working OK. And I'm sort yeah. of getting the same level of service and product as I was getting before. So why not continue in that vein? I'm a bit like you, actually, Simon, I do like to meet people face to face and it is a shame that we can't do that so much but i think there needs to be maybe a more of a balance i think when we come out of it so so no that's, that's a really good point so is there anything you you've learned about yourself i suppose during lockdown simon yeah i think so um i think my biggest thing was before lockdown um and you know at least once a week i, I would tend to work from home because i felt like i needed that um that sort of calm and quiet and, and headspace um to to just do some um, I don't like to use it, but deep work, you know, the stuff where you're working sort of on, on the business rather than in the business. And I mean, I'm sure you can appreciate what it's like if you go into a, a busy help desk, uh, you, you know, the first thing that happens is people are asking questions and you overhear things and you can't help but, you know, get involved. Um, and so I used to do that once a week and I really looked forward to those days at home where I would have that, that time. Um, and now, uh, and I think I almost... And say resented going to the office but I, I definitely got to a stage where I was sometimes some days I'd be thinking, oh, I don't really want to go to the office today um, and now it's, it's quite the opposite you know I really miss the um, the, the camaraderie um, and the team um, element of being in the office um, and in in IT for sure when you've got a, um, a help desk um, and people are dealing with issues and, and things like that um, I think that it's really important that you can sort of just stand up and ask the room, oh, has anyone ever seen this issue before? Um, and get a quick answer from, from people. And also you overhear people dealing with things and you think, oh, I think I know what that is. And, and you can really help um, them solve issues faster. Whereas that is nigh on impossible to replace, you know, when you're all working remotely. I mean, you can obviously ask people and we have some really good tech to communicate with each other, but it, it just isn't the same. So yeah, I guess I've learned that I miss the office more than I thought I would. <laughs> I think, yeah, a few people have said that to me, actually. So mm. so what just um, cast your mind back to when we came out of the first lockdown. What, what was the first thing you did personally? What, what did you uh, what did you do when you were allowed to do pretty much whatever you wanted? Uh, I played tennis. <laughs> Super. I'm, I'm a massive uh, tennis fan and, and I tend to I usually play through two or three, four times a week um, during normal circumstances. So um, I was pretty upset that that I wasn't allowed to do that um, and I'm pretty upset again today that <laughs> I'm not yeah. allowed to do it for four weeks um, but um, but yeah that was the first thing I did um, and then probably after second after that would be just going for a pint. <laughs> yeah me too I think um, I, I used to play tennis quite a bit as well and, I, and I, I didn't really understand when we went into the second lockdown that a sport when you're spending your, yourself 25 meters away from your opponent really don't see the problem myself but you know there you go. There you no go. I I think the LTA are um, petitioning the government, but um, but yeah, I, I agree. It seems a bit crazy to me. Yeah, and hopefully if it doesn't work out for the next month, at least going forward, if there are future lockdowns, they will be, uh, the LTA will manage to negotiate some yeah. sort of deal with them whereby certain clubs are left open. Yeah, so, um, absolutely. So just to come back to, to your business then, um, just, just to wrap up really, just if you could let us know who you're, so you said your ideal customers are pretty much regulated companies and professional services generally is there yeah. and can you expand on that a little bit is there any anything more what, what particular um, job titles within those companies would be the people that you would be speaking to and, and dealing with would you say um so in in uh, legal in law firms uh, we tend to be communicating with the managing partners um and with in terms of size you know anything from 10 to 100 users is our is our sort of sweet spot um, and uh, it would generally be the managing partners or the compliance managers um, that we'd be speaking to. Um, I, uh, I think they're generally the ones who are in charge of IT in, in the law firms that we deal with. Um, in other businesses, probably, again, it's generally because of the size, it naturally tends to be the owner um, managers that we're, that we're dealing with um, or occasionally finance directors. Fantastic. And so, so if, if someone was interested right now, and, and they wanted to speak to you. How do you work? How do you kick off a business relationship? What What do you do? Some sort of fact find call to start off with? How does it work? 
Yeah, uh, absolutely. A, f- a fact finding call to start with. So the main the main question I would ask them is, you know, what are your what are your problems? What's causing your business or you personally issues with um, with IT today? What's keeping you up at night? Um, for some people, that might be, I'm really worried about my security. You know, I'm dre- we've recently been hacked or somebody fell for a phishing email. What can we do to beef up our security? Um, for others, it might be that they've got uh, refresh coming up um, and they're being told by their existing provider that it's going to cost them tens of thousands and they just want to you know, sort of bounce that off somebody else to say, you know, does this sound right? Um, and everything in between, really. But Makes what are your problems with IT? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> good stuff. So so I suppose then to, just, to, just to finish up then, how best can people contact you, Simon? Or would Mark be the best person to speak to? Or is, is there who's the best person to get in contact with? And if you could just uh, let us know their email address and... and, and yeah, uh, of course. Um, no, no, I'm, I'm, yeah, any and all of us. But um, my email address is simon at gather.tech. Um, our website is www.gather.tech. So any of those methods you know all our contact details are online or just search for gather technology on linkedin and you know follow us on there and you can reach out to any one of us good stuff well that's been really useful what i'm going to do simon after this i'm going to post this onto linkedin and in the comments below the first comment is going to be exactly the the, the your contact details so other people can easily get in contact with you so for now thank you so much simon i've really appreciated the time we've spent together learned a lot about what you've done and how you've helped people it's been really good um, so fantastic catch up soon absolute pleasure thank you very much philip take care thanks very much simon bye-bye cheers bye